Hello and welcome again to RC Model Reviews. Today I want to talk about something that everybody who flies models will eventually have to get to grips with, and that's fixing a broken model. Now this is Barry's Dolphin. It's a really nice plane. Had a bit of an accident with it yesterday, I mean 12 months ago. Um, had a bit of an unexpected encounter with the tarmac, left it looking very much second hand. So when you get a model like this, you've got to decide is it worth fixing? And if it is worth fixing, how are you going to fix it? Now the old days with balsa and tissue and silk and dope, it was often easier just to throw the plane away after a bad crash and just build a new one. But these days, thanks to EPO and foam and you know, the, the new technology of materials, it's often, it's very hard to get a model that's completely written off. Um, you only have to look at the Spectra 50 channel and, and the creations that um, Alex, aka Charlie the Chimp, creates out of broken models. It's amazing. In fact, if anyone should be making this video, it should be Charlie um, or Alex from Spectra 50 because he's had so much experience at turning wreckages into aircraft. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the process of how I repair this particular model. Now, to be totally honest, I love fixing broken models. Putting together an ARF, well, all you're doing is following a set of instructions. There's no creativity. There's, it's just a necessary evil if you want to get flying. Repairing a broken model, it really stretches the old grey matter. It makes you think. It lets you sort of unleash your creative side. And sometimes you come up with a model when you fixed it. It's even better than when you started before it was broken. But let's have a look at some of the basics for repairing models. Now there are some basic tools and equipment you're probably going to need to do your repairs. Obviously you're going to need key one, hot glue gun. Now this EPO foam responds very favourably to hot glue. It sticks very well. A few downsides, if you have too much heat sometimes the foam will pop. That means the little bubbles will actually expand. Uh, or sometimes they'll actually melt the foam. The, fo the, the glue will melt the foam. So yeah, you've got to be a bit careful with your hot glue gun. It's really, really useful. But I tend to use it more for emergency repairs than the kind of repairs I'm going to be doing now where I want the results to be prettier and longer lasting. So that's when I break out the glues and I've got Gorilla Glue here, this is polyurethane glue. It works quite well on foam, especially if you've got a few gaps because this stuff will foam up. It actually bubbles up. I'll be doing some uh, a video on, I started on glues with the two-part glues. I'm going to do one on polyurethane very soon so I'll tell you all about the secrets and strengths and weaknesses of polyurethane glue. But this is uh, something that everybody should have in their toolbox. Now I'm going to give a try on this one. I haven't done this before. I got some of the flexible CA from Hobby King. Now one of the problems with using CA on EPO or any foam is that foam tends to be quite flexible. CA tends to be quite brittle. So I'm hoping that this flexible CA will work a whole lot better than regular CA on EPO. Now you've probably heard of foam safe CA. Well in the case of EPO you don't need to worry about that. It, the EPO is resistant to most glues. It's not going to dissolve away. So you can use regular CA or as I say in this case I'm going to try out the flexible and see what happens. Of course you'll need a bit of kicker if you're using CA. It always helps it go off. And then you've got this fiberglass tape. Now there's two types of fiberglass tape. You can get the one that has a kind of a mesh weave to it. But to be honest I prefer the unidirectional fiberglass tape. Just has threads that run the length of the tape because it's a little more flexible. If you want to have um, a weave out of it you can layer one layer on top of the other at right 90 degree angles but this is incredibly strong and it adds immense stiffness to foam. If you've got a piece of foam that's gone soft as they sometimes do, tail of the AXN or even the park zone radius, radian, I've reinforced a lot of those with this tape and it just stiffens them up no end. So you get yourself a reel of this stuff, really worth it. It's only a couple of bucks, great value. Now you're also going to need a modelling knife. You've got to cut stuff. You've got to cut stuff to make room for new stuff. So you need a modelling knife. And as far as materials go, you want some spare bits of foam. I haven't got any here at the moment. I've got an old wrecked model out the back that I will sacrifice, just basically cut up. It's got broken wing and things. It's made of EPO, so I'm going to sacrifice bits of that to fill in the gaps because unfortunately when this thing hit the runway, it was a bit of a snowstorm and quite a few little bits just blew away in the wind. So we didn't recover all the parts. So I'll show you how to make new parts and how to finish them off. The other thing I'm going to touch on, perhaps not in this video, but in a future video, is once you've fixed it up, it's going to look ugly. It really is. It's got, it's got big bits missing and, and cracks and grazes and things. I'm going to look at how we paint EPO to make it look pretty because there's a few techniques. Some work well, some not so well. You've probably all seen EPO models that someone's just taken a spray can to and they look great and for a few weeks and then they start getting nicks and scuffs and bits, scratches and things. They look really shabby. So I'm going to look at methods of painting an EPO model that 
a long lived that produce a durable finish and we'll probably repaint Barry's dolphin eventually using those techniques. So in the meantime, let's have a closer look at the damage and let's get started on the repair. Okay, as you can see, the front has got rather split. It's, it's got a big split in the front. Some of the bits of foam are in there. So we get those out. Um, ooh, come on, there you go. And obviously the wing, <laughs> the wing has parted company with the fuselage. The wing is normally held on by this bolt at the back here, which is actually part of the wing. So we have to glue this piece of foam back into the wing so we can remount the wing. Um, otherwise, I'll just we'll have to unplug something here because we've got a, a lead to the receiver. Just take that out, if I can get out, there we go. So I've got the wing completely free now. Um, looking at the wing, it's actually not too bad. It's just got this major ding up here and a piece of the capping is missing. We've still got that bit. And you can see it's got a, it's got a crack in there. It's cracked open, so I have to put that in there. One thing I should have mentioned in the materials is some carbon strip, wonderful stuff. Although the tape will work pretty well. And we'll just fix that side up, put the new piece in the back, and the wing will be back to being good as ever. And looking at the fuselage again, you can see that the damage really isn't that bad considering the whack it went in with. Um, the nose has been pretty demolished around here. We're gonna have to put the pieces we can in there and then rebuild. We're gonna have to um, put new pieces in, sand it down to contour, whatever we want to do there. Um, there's a bit of distortion here, you see that? The front's been distorted. Now EPO sometimes does this, it, it bends and distorts. Um, you can reshape it with heat, but you could be really careful because if it melts, <laughs> it's even worse than the damage you started with. And you can actually dip EPO into hot water, nearly boiling water, and it takes out all the, any dents and creases. But again, you gotta be careful, because if you overdo it, it pops and you get a very rough popcorn-like texture on the top. But you know, I'm pretty impressed. We don't have to do a lot to put this model back in the ground. Considering it hit the, the tarmac nearly at full throttle, it's pretty damn good, pretty damn good result. So let's get started. I'll start on the wing first. Right, first up, we're gonna see if this little piece here can be persuaded to fit back into the wing. It's actually a pretty clean break, and because EPO is quite flexible and it goes in really easily, so that is going to be a real simple, just glue it straight in job. Um, I don't think it'll require much reinforcement, but it is a pivotal point of the whole model. There's a lot of stress on this because that's the bolt that holds the wing on. So I'll look later and see whether I might actually put some little reinforcement around here, just to, in case the, the, the foam is more damaged than I think, and it might just give way. So first of all, I have to decide on what glue to use. I'm going to do a bit of experimentation off camera and decide whether to use that flexible CA here or whether I use polyurethane. As for this piece of the wing here that's obviously got a bit of a crack in it and the, the actual plastic has come away from the channel in the wing, um, we're gonna have to be cruel to be kind. I'm gonna have to prise some of this out so I can actually get back in and re-glue it properly. I don't think I'll use the, or maybe I'll try the glue. One of the other glues I should have mentioned is the actual glue that comes with these things, which is a solvent-based glue. And it's actually quite tenacious. I'm, here we go, it's actually coming off now. The, the solvent-based glue is actually quite tenacious. The problem is it can be difficult to, to, to use effectively, so that's probably enough. I think that's gonna give me access to, as you can see, the wing spar under there. I'll lift the spar, I'll get some glue under it, and uh, then I will make sure this is all down. We still have the missing piece here, so I'll put that in as well. And there's not many gaps missing there, so I'm going to use the original um, solvent-based glue to glue this piece back together. Here it is, you'll recognize this stuff comes in these white tubes. You always have plenty left over, so don't throw it away because for repairs, you might need it. Now look, one thing I've noticed is that the carbon spar, it's pull-treated and it's actually fractured. It's actually shattered. It's split into multiple parts. So I'm gonna fix that up with CA first because the strength from these tubes comes from their, their round shape and at the moment, it's looking anything but round. It's looking decidedly second hand, so. Yes, I should actually replace the spar. I don't have another tube, so um, I'm not going to. I might have to take this back further. In fact, I'll probably just cut this here because this little foam cap has no real strength. So I'm just gonna take the foam cap out. I'm not trying, trying not to cut through the servo extension that's under there as well. I'll take the foam cap out. That will give me the access I need to deal with the spar. Remember, when you're repairing, Strength has got to be one of your primary concerns. Um, it's best to have a repair that doesn't look so good but is nice and strong than one that looks great but falls apart in the air. So here we go. Yeah, that, that splitting goes right back to here. So I'm going to actually use CA, regular CA to fix up those splits because that's probably the best thing to work with this stuff. Regular CA, you can actually just get it positioned and then wick some CA into the cracks and hopefully they'll all glue back together. Right, I'm just getting this carefully positioned, trying to close up a crack here, 
just one drop of regular CA in that crack should hold it. Gotta make sure it doesn't run up and stick your fingers together, which it just did to me. Now, a little tip with CA. If you don't have any um, kicker on hand, or you can't reach it because your fingers are stuck to the item you're gluing, then actually blowing on it, not blowing, but getting the moisture of your breath onto the glue will actually help kick it off quite quickly. So just like that makes a big difference. That'll help kick it because moisture, you can see my fingers stuck nicely to that. Moisture is what helps kick off CA. Oh, oh damn. The glue to my finger is stronger than the glue to the ah, fiberglass. Oh, I love CA, but sometimes, sometimes I hate it. Let's have another go at that. Get another little drip on there. You only need just a drop. That's all you need. Oh, that's actually going to stick it. Now. There we go. It's free. Now I'll just give it a bit of kicker because it's not stuck to my finger anymore. There we go. Oh, new bottle of kicker doesn't spray very well. Never mind. So now we, now we go. I've just glued one of the cracks together just temporarily. That'll just hold together. And then I'll just tip this over and I'll do the same on the other cracks so that I end up gluing the whole cracked piece of um, carbon tube together. Then I'm going to just wrap a little bit of thread around it because that'll stop it trying to pull apart again. Um, a spiral wrap of thread perhaps, that'll add immense strength to the carbon tube. Yes, yeah, so I would have replaced it if I had one. Don't have one, so you might do. We repair what's broken. Just a tip here if you're using these little CA bottles, give them a good tap every time you put them down and the CA will fall back down the spout, won't clog it up. And try and keep the spout itself clean. Uh, give it a wipe um, after every use application to keep that clean so it doesn't actually then stick when you put the lid back on. These little things, if you do them regularly, make the bottles far more useful. I actually end up, um, my bottles last about five or six fills. I just refill them out of the Hobby King bulk bottle. And uh, by being careful about tapping it so it doesn't clog up, they last for ages. Because one of the big problems is, if you don't take care of them, these things clog up and you've got to keep cutting the nozzle or sticking pins in them and then oh, it becomes very, very messy. Okay, hopefully as you can see, I have actually glued the little strip on the back there. You know, these are the little strips that that normally fit over the top here, it got broken off. I've glued that down, I've used the solvent based glue and I've wound spiral thread around the, the split carbon tube and I've used CA to hold that thread in place and it wicks up all the cracks and makes for a very strong um, repair to a carbon tube. So now I've just got a weight on here, you can see this has got a weight on it to hold that strip on there, holds everything straight and level and the rest of the wings propped up underneath. So now I just wait for that solvent based glue to go off because it takes a little while, that's quite warm today, so I don't think it'll take too long. And that will have restored the rigidity of the wing. Then I have to put some CA, I'm gonna try that flexible CA in here, along these cracks, just wick that in, see how that works out. Now as you can see, I've glued in the little tip piece, then I glued in the other piece. It's all glued down, it's nice and strong. It's actually rigided up, or well, made the wing <laughs> rigided, that's not a word. It's made the wing far more rigid now. Now this piece here is obviously going to be the next thing to attack but it's it's really only cosmetic there is a crack in there which I'll be gluing up which means that it can move but what I'll have to do is cut a piece out of here and then find another piece of foam I can graft in then just sand it finish it up to about the same shape now these holes here the little dings and dents if you want to you can fill them what I'm going to do is I'm going to run some fiberglass tape because I had to cut this one here so that's obviously reduced the strength of that cap strip. Well, that doesn't really make a lot of difference to the overall strength. But I'm going to run a couple of strands or a couple of runs of this fiberglass tape from tip to tip to really improve the rigidity of our repaired wing. And sometimes it's not a bad idea on a, on a stock system anyway. It just adds a bit more rigidity. So yeah, the wing tip itself is also kind of scuffed here. As you can see, I'm not going to be too worried about that. I think we'll just uh, leave it. Maybe, you know, if you want to, you can put a bit of filler on it, but uh, who really cares? I mean, you know, it's not, con not a concours d'elegance model. So then, ooh, see that go crack? Ooh, that's that crack there on the top. So more structural work is required. As you can see, this crack actually goes back quite a way. It goes back to the spar. So the spar is the only thing that's holding it at the moment. And I shall, I'm not quite sure what glue I'll use here. I might try some of that, that CA, because if I hold it together, the capillary action will draw that flexible CA into the crack. So I think I'll give that a go because it, it's not totally structural and the tape will add to strength. So I'm gonna try some flexible, that new flexible CA. I'll let you know whether it works. Here it is, this is the stuff I showed you before, but just in case you hadn't seen it. Oh, no, this is a brand new bottle, so I have to cut the top off. And when it comes to cutting the top off this C, these CA bottles, again, tap them, make sure the CA is right down and there's none left in the spout, give it a bit of a tap. 
Otherwise, you end up with it spurting out everywhere and it, it won't be a happy situation. I like to cut just, just enough. I don't like to have big holes in my CA dispensers. There we go, that's made a hole. There's a hole there now. So I'm going to, probably all out of shot because it's difficult to do, I'm going to wick some of the flexible CA into this crack and then I'm going to hold it together for a while while it kicks off. So we'll see whether it actually works. See if it's good glue, I don't know. This is trying new territory here. So I'm just following the crack, wicking the CA in, leaving plenty of it in there, right here. And now I'm going to hold this roughly together. I'm going to give it a blast of kicker because apparently it responds to kicker. Ooh, look at that. So now I'm just going to hold this because one thing about CA that we all love is it goes off really quickly, especially when you put a bit of kicker on it. So there we go, I have wicked the CA in, I have sprayed the kicker, and hopefully, yeah, seems to have kicked, seems to have gone off. And I'll do the same on the bottom because it's probably not going to wick all the way down from the top. So there is a bit of a crack in here. I'm going to pour a reasonably sizable chunk of this CA glue into that crack to try and get right through. Here we go, and it's, it's not dissolving the foam because this is EPO. An EPO is foam safe. I mean, the, the EPO doesn't respond to, uh, or doesn't dissolve, CA doesn't dissolve EPO, so don't have to use that horrible foam safe stuff. Never liked that foam safe CA. Just never really seemed to stick as well as real CA. Now this is the flexible stuff. In theory, this should bend with the wing rather than just becoming brittle and cracking. So, oh yeah, that seems to have, that's made a huge difference now. This is really quite rigid again, this wing. That's marvellous. I could work some down here, but I'm afraid it might get into the servo gears and that would really ruin my day. So, it could be a little bit more, a little bit more there. Just a fraction of them. Just try putting a bit more in. Obviously, there might be a bit of a gap there. The other problem with CA is it doesn't fill gaps. That's really annoying. You can get gap filling CA, but I don't think you can get gap filling flexible CA, so you've got to make choices. Make choices based upon the most important requirement. In this case, I really want it to be flexible. Now, yeah, no, that's really gone off good. I'm happy with that. That's brilliant. Excellent. Oops. <laughs> actually, <laughs> God, I should, it's actually run out. I put too much in, it's run out onto the wing. But fortunately, most of it's run out onto the sticker. So I, I might peel that sticker off. Um, I used too much. When I said I was going to pour plenty in, I sort of overdid it and it's run out on the bottom. But give me a chance to see how flexible it is, actually. Ah, because um, this is the glue after it's set. And it isn't, it's certainly not as brittle as regular CA. Let's have a look. Oh, this is great. A little review within a build video. Let's review the new flexible CA from Hobby King. Now here we go, I'll try and get it over here so you can see. This is a piece I've peeled off and look. It, it, is, it does still break, it's still brittle, but it's got a lot more bend, a lot more flex than regular CA. And if you bend it too far, oh no, look, it's actually, yeah, it will break, but that's bloody marvellous. I'm quite impressed with this. This looks really, really good. So now that I've actually tested that flexible CA and it does seem to work, I'm going to use it to glue this other piece back in here, the piece that I showed you before. So we'll just whack some CA on here, stick it together, and it should be pretty strong. I, yeah, I'm, I'm liking this. I might buy another bottle of this flexible CA glue because it really does seem to be the best of both worlds when it comes to strength and flexibility. So let's get this in here. Hopefully it doesn't kick off too soon. Beautiful, that's just gorgeous. That's lovely, that is. Here we go, a little blast of kicker from the side. Yep, there we go. Now, that's pretty quick and easy. And it's a lot prettier than hot glue, <laughs> I have to say. One of the downsides, as I said, of hot glue is it's great for field repairs, it's really quick, but oh, gee, the results can look pretty nasty from time to time. You get great big globs of glue and it melts the foam or it... Uh, Whatever, so that, that's probably as close as I'm going to get this. That doesn't look too bad at all. It's not perfect, certainly not perfect because you know, a fair bit of trauma was done there, so that's fine now. I've also got on here, we've got the, the fan's a bit loose because I did hot glue the fan to the side, but that's pulled the foam out. So I'm going to use some of that uh, flexible CA there and glue the fan back in. So it's back to the fuselage and we've got these tatty stickers that I'll be peeling off. They're just going to be a pain in the backside. You see, most of the problem is this split here and it's also, you know, lost a lot of the front. I'm going to take the magnet out. I don't want to lose the little magnet which holds the catch on. Um, 
And really, just putting some glue in this crack here is going to go an awfully long way towards making this thing back to, back to the way it was. So I'm going to use more of this flexible CA and see how we get on with that. Um, there's also a crack down the bottom, so I'm going to whack a bit of CA into the very bottom. There's a little crack in there um, where the two halves join, and it's come apart slightly, but actually not very much, but still I'll put some glue in there anyway. But mostly the glue is going to go on here to join these two halves back together and see how we get on. Obviously there wasn't a lot of glue on here in the first place and there's also a piece of black plastic here which is supposed to retain the front of the wing so I'll put some glue in there, squeeze it all together, line it up, try and make sure it's all lined up properly and just hold it tight hoping that the, well I'll get the key kicker out it's not hope, let's just use the chemical chemicals we have at our disposal. So there we go. I'll still hold it till it kicks off. And that's glued this major piece across here. This is our major stress, major strength area of the craft. That's done. So really we've only got this little tiny piece on the end of the nose to do now, and it'll be fixed. And that, that's pretty damn good. I'm impressed with that. This is a, a really quick and easy repair, even though it was a devastating impact. Yeah, not bad at all. Not bad at all. There we go, that seems to have kicked still a little bit of, might be able to squeeze a bit more glue in there. There we go. And we just hold it through the magic of television or YouTube. You won't have to wait as long as I do. So now we've got the front to deal with and as you can see by looking at it, there's, um, doesn't seem much damage around here, but on this side, there's actually, you can see a whole lot of lines here. I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up. There's a whole lot of stress lines, a whole lot of wrinkles. They generally occur when the foam is compressed. And with EPO, it doesn't always bounce back to exactly the original size. Now, obviously, the impact area was here. You can see the black scuffs where it ran along the tarmac. So it's had a really big whack here. So the nose is tilted to the left, and it's actually tilted up a bit. If I can line this up, you might be able to see the different angle, different angle in the sides. This far side here is actually... Um, at a different angle to the near side. So it's got a bit of a really bad twist in it. And if we look from the top, you can see um, it has actually swung around a bit to this side. I'll put one of the little pieces of foam back in there. It's not a good fit anymore, but yeah, we've got to get started with something. So um, fortunately, the canopy wasn't damaged. It's what well, it was, a little bit of a scuff there, but we can use that to help us align the fuselage, get it sorted out. And you can see there's a bit of a gap in here because as I say, the nose was, nose was pushed up. So it's put a gap in there now if I was to pull the, the nose down it's a bit hard um, that gap will actually close up and on the other side you can see there's it's not too bad on this side this side was the side that didn't hit the ground but if we look down on it there is a little bit of a kink to the side now of course you've really got to decide how much am I actually going to do to repair this thing I'm really going to put in a whole lot of effort and make it look like new or do I just want to fly it again in this case Barry wants to fly it tomorrow so I'm not going to get carried away I will try and get it a bit straighter and I'm going to use my heat gun. I'm not going to dip it in boiling water because I've got all my radio gear now. I don't want all the moisture coming up and possibly affecting that. So I'm just going to get my heat gun, give it a very light heating, and then just try and mold it by hand back to roughly where it was before the crash. So here we are. I've actually finished the wing now. As you can see, if I turn this over, the, uh, the top, all these cap strips are back on the spar. I've actually used a little bit of spackle here where there were some holes. It's a very lightweight. I've had this for a little while. I don't know if you can buy this anywhere in the, else in the world, but it's this. It's a water-based, sort of like micro balloons, very light, very light filler. And I actually used that on the leading edge of the wing as well, where there was that big gouge, because uh, it was actually works out quicker than cutting a piece of foam and sanding it all to shape. Just slap the spackle in there, sanded it back. I've only done it roughly at this stage. I'll tidy it up before we paint it in another video. But there you go. So the wing is looking almost as good as new now. And it's very strong, very stiff, just the way it was when it came out of the box. So that only leaves the fuselage. And I've done a bit of work on that while the camera was turned off. Um, I've glued the, I, I used a bit of heat to get the shape right, to, to basically um, get rid of all the little stressy wrinkles that were in here because when you heat it up it tends to relax a bit and that means it tries to return to its original shape. I've glued one of the little pieces of foam in the nose here but unfortunately there's just too much missing to rebuild. I've got another piece here but this is so bent out of shape it's just never going to go in. It's just more trouble and it's worth trying to glue it back together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut the nose off and I'm going to get a whole new piece of foam 
and mold it to shape, or just carve it and sand it to shape to remake the nose. It's, it's really so much easier and less time wasting than going through and trying to rebuild this whole thing from you know, all the little broken pieces. Uh, apart from that, um, yeah, really all I have to do now is just rebuild the nose. The canopy, I used that as a guide when I was um, realigning things, and although it's not perfect, it does go on reasonably well now, and the, the magnets do seem to hold, so I'm quite happy with that. I think once we've done the cosmetics on the nose, she'll be good as new, Barry's Dolphin. So now I've glued a block of, this is polystyrene here, I didn't have any EPO the right size, so I glued a roughly hewn block of polystyrene to the front of the Dolphin after cutting a nice flat surface. And I used polyurethane glue because most other glues will attack polystyrene. So polyurethane glue is quite a safe glue and also it works really well on foams because it gets into all these little looks and crannies on the surface of raw foam. So there you go. What I'm going to do now of course is just pare this away with a knife and then give it a bit of a sand and try and get it roughly the right contour. There's still going to be a gap here which I'll fill with speckle and um, then I think we should be yeah, pretty close to having Barry's dolphin back in the air. Righto, so here we go. This is almost finished. You can see I've sculpted the nose with the filler. It's looking nearly as good as new, I have to say. Not bad at all, even if I do say so myself. Now obviously these stickers here, I'm gonna to have to peel the stickers off a bit. Um, but as I said, I wanna do a repaint. I'm gonna do a bit of a paint job on the front of the old dolphin, make it look a bit swisher. The canopy actually fits, not as good as I'd like it to, but it's, it's near enough. It's near enough for this job. And of course with the wing, We've got the, I'm not going to wire, I won't wire it up, but I'll show you the whole thing back together um, in an upcoming video when we'll get Barry to test fly it again. But um, as you can see, hopefully the wing will fit in the required place. Let's get all the guts back in here. The little wind, the little pegs line up in the front, the little screw hole lines up at the back. There you go. Now this is pretty much as good as new as far as dolphins go, I think. I'll do all this my screwdriver over there. Um, but yeah, given that the shape that it was in, I think you'll agree the dolphin's looking pretty healthy again. And that's basically how you fix EPO planes, or how I fix them anyway. Um, we think, I think basically that flexible CA, that's definitely a win. I'm gonna get some more of that. That's, for the EPO, bloody brilliant, because it just, it doesn't crack, it just bends with the foam. Excellent, top quality. I, I did originally buy it for using with CA hinges, but then when I thought about it, you don't really want a flexible glue for CA hinges because you want that glue to break. And not, not, if it's flexible, it's gonna make it harder to bend the control surface. So if the glue breaks, then it's just the hinge itself that flexes and that's gotta be better. So I, I think the real strength of that um, flexible CA is EPO, putting the EPO back together. And then your lightweight spackle on the front here, as so I'm gonna paint it. I'm gonna use a latex or an acrylic paint It'll help bind that filler together so that we don't get it little chipping and things when Barry does his usual landing. So that'll put a nice little sort of flexible rubbery type film on the nose and we'll put a bit of color and stuff in there, make it look better than new. And of course, remember, I'm so impressed with how strong this model is. I wish I'd got the impact on video for you, but I didn't. Um, I'm really looking forward to putting the Hobby King Pulse Jet on my dolphin when it arrives and I think it's going to be a perfect fit for this model. It's going to be a really exciting project. I hope you stick with me for that one. And uh, in the meantime, if you've got questions on this whole thing, this whole repair thing, put them on the bottom of the video. If you do quite a few repairs, Charlie, if you, Alex, if you do a lot of repairs like Alex does um, from Spectra 50, then maybe you can lend your own hints and tips because this is just the way I do it. There may be better ways to do some of this stuff. Maybe you have your own hints, tips, little things you can pass on to others. So yeah, include those in the description, or sorry, in the comments in the bottom of this video. In the meantime, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned to the RC Model Reviews channel. I'm really looking forward to actually um, doing my Christmas video so I can actually trim my beard. It's really scruffy, but if you want to look like Santa for the little kids and for the viewers, well, you've got to do that. Bye for now.